on balancing, they'll be able to drop that one low score. Now remember what Kim Sinestro did. She really helped her team. All right. And the follow was Betty Okino out of Elmhurst, Illinois, just 15 right. years old. And this Strong is what she did. Betty is absolutely beautiful on the balance beam. Nice long line, really shows off the long legs, shows off the flexibility. The anchor in this rotation, she finished first on the beam in our national championships. Fulfilling one of the requirements right off the bat, an acrobatic element right into a dance element, the front walkover into the Sison jump. Very critical pass, back hands from two layout step out. Solid as a rock. It's her leap combination for gymnastic series requirement. Watch this turn. Double turn. So difficult on the balance beam. Very, very risky. Of course, that earns bonus points for her. Showing a nice hand. Very solid work. This is her dismount pass. Two back hands means to a double back. And one step on the landing. The only deduction in the routine was really that one step. And she followed up Kim Zemeth with the 9-9-0 whip for Betty Okino, a 9-9-0. This is a very difficult event on which to start, and the Americans, Kathy, have done extremely well. They have done extremely well. After this one event, the United States is up by .088. Not much of a lead, but any lead at this point is fantastic. Here's that double turn. Very difficult. You can see her spot the end of the beam between each turn. The nice hand stand. Arches over. To a move made popular by Christy Phillips many, many years ago, also a gymnast of Bella Caroli. And then goes right into the plant and down to straddle splits. She had a little bit of trouble sometimes in the landing in the warm-ups, but look at this. Pulls it right around, and just the one step on the landing. The only deduction of the routine, therefore 9.9. .9. The first rotation, USA 29.525. The favorite Soviet Union 29.437.088. The difference in score to Larry King. Thanks, Jim. When we come back, we're going to have an extraordinary time with two people who left their mark on Olympics past. Nadia and Olga. That's all I got to tell you. We'll be right back. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. Boat in Elliott Bay, just uh, 25 to 6 here in Seattle on this Friday night, a beautiful evening. And uh, we start our second weekend of competition at the Goodwill Games. One follow the other in our hearts at the 1972 Olympics, Olga Corbett made the world realize how beautiful gymnastics could be. And at the 1976 Olympics, Nadia Komenich showed how it's possible to do something perfectly. And tonight we're pleased to have each of them with us here on our inaugural night of women's gymnastics at the Goodwill Games. On my left is Nadia Komenich. Nadia can speak and understand English pretty good. Olga Corbett will have an interpreter. First, right off the top, what did you think of Kim's performance? I think that uh, she did no mistake. Did I gave her 9.95. You gave her better than yes. the judges. Yes. Huh? Is that one of the more difficult aspects of gymnastic competition, the bar? For viewers, and I think for uh, all the gymnasts, uh, the most difficult. Why? Because um, you must work uh, more at the beam. Was the bar harder for you, Olga? No, 
Ну, вообще, правильно Надя сказала, что гривно это коварный снаряд. Боже, мачхода фоми, но Надя и затрудливает. Бим это очень сложный элемент. Так у мальчика конь, мать, и так у нас гривно. Волт для мужчин, и, конечно, бим для женщин. Это для обоих. Let's start with you, Olga. Do you miss competing? Ну, в прошлом году я выступала на вольность. Я соскучилась скорее не по снарядам, а по зрителям. Last year I had a chance to perform in an exhibit, but uh, I missed the audience greatly. The audience? Yes. More than the competition? Да, я больше люблю uh, не соревнования, а показать на выступление, потому что не боишься, что упадешь, не боишься. I more than a competition because you're not afraid of falling in mistakes. Huh. You miss it. I miss very much. I uh, start to train again, but all the time when I am in the competition, uh, work the competition, I am so emotional because I feel that I like to do again. But I realize that I am too old for this now. Also, do you, when you watch them, do you want them to do well? Yes. You root for them? Yes. No matter what country? No matter. Do you root for them too? Do you want all of them to do well? Я почему-то всегда болею за слабейших. Один... The underdog. Самых последних, да? Ну, не самых последних, но мне почему-то всегда очень не жалко, обидно, когда она падает. I always feel so bad for the ones that fall or make a big mistake. Потому что я уверена, что он на тренировках делал бирзу горику. I know for sure that they must have performed beautifully. Just not at the competition. What is the rule when you fall, Nadia? I mean, do you, do you, you got to get right up, right? And, and act like you didn't. When you but you know you did. I felt that the Olympic Games in 1980 are the world. It's uh, very hard because you, you are too much for a competition. And you can lose all the things in one second. But you can't put it out of your mind. You have to get up and finish, right? Yes, but it's very hard. You must be a very strong person. To, to compete and to, to finish the competition. Emotionally strong. Yes. Yeah. Was that was it tough for you, Olga, on those rare times when you would fall? Я чувствовала какую-то обиду и то, что я не выполнила то пожелание зрителей, которые за меня болели. I felt very bitter and I also felt that I didn't fulfill my promise to the audience. You understand Russian? No. Because you were smiling like you wanted to. Little bit, little bit of that. All right. Because you two were pretty tough competitors against each other, right? I you understand all the thing. Uh, you competed against each other in '76, yeah. right? In uh, 1976, Olympic Games in Montreal. That's right. That's when. All right. Some personal things regarding your countries. Are you sorry you left? So uh, I wanted to. Be free, and that's why I left Romania. And uh, now I'm happy because uh, the Romanians are free. Your former coach was here last night. He said he would not want to go back. Would you want to go back? I would go back to visit, but uh, I would not go back to stay. Olga, what about the uh, Soviet Union's team that we're going to see here tonight? Ну, я думаю, что как всегда, команда Советского Союза большое внимание уделяет подготовке. So the team always spends a lot of time on a proper preparation. Ну, я хочу пожелать самого большого успеха, победы. I'd like to wish everyone success and victory, of course. They, you know, she is saying, you are saying the Soviet Union definitely will be prepared. Команда точно будет готова. Ну, значит, она победит. Победит сильнее всегда. Yes, they will be prepared, and I know that the strongest will win. Romania only has one person here, right? Yes, what one happened? gymnast. I, uh, yesterday when I came here, I knew that uh, from Romania it came just one gymnast. I'm not disappointed because after all the things that happened in Romania, the most important thing was the freedom. And uh, they have freedom now, and they can prepare for all the competitions. How good or how important to you was Karoli? was very important to me. I, we were friends. And every time when I met him, I, I saw emotion for, I don't know, but I feel something inside. What, uh, of what percentage would you say the coach counts of an athlete, given, given a very good gymnast 
with a fair coach average to do better? Uh, I think uh, it's 50-50. 50-50? Yes. Do you agree with that? The coach is 50%? Yes, I now, right before you perform? It's important because uh, you, sometimes you don't uh, have the chance to speak with the coach because you think uh, the, you're exercise, but you need the coach eyes because you can understand I feel what... Are you talking to you while you're performing? Yes, but you are the time, you know. Your coach talked to you while you were performing? We'll come right back. Uh, we're going to have more, by the way, with Nadia Komenich and Olga Corbett. They'll be with us through the uh, women's gymnastics. Hey, if you're going to get two experts, you could do a lot worse than this. And speaking of broadcasting it, you could do a lot worse than our man on the scene, Jim Simpson. Jim? Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Back at the Tacoma Dome, we're in the second rotation. The Americans are on the floor exercise. And the very challenging Chinese are on, on the unevens. Here is the second rotation within the rotation. Remember, that is not what they were at the end of the first rotation. At the end of the first rotation, the United States had that point zero eight eight difference over the USSR and Spain was third. Zhang Shia will be the first that we will see on the unevens for the Chinese. Amy Sher has already gone for the Americans of the floor exercise. Came with a 9550. And this is the young 15 year old from Shandong province, Zhang Shia. And the Chinese placing in fourth after the first event is not indicative of their talent. That is a fairly weak event for them. This, however, is one of their strongest events. And she is the strongest of the Chinese. She won the China Cup on this event, this uneven bar apparatus. They have such beautiful lines on this event. Good swing, perfect form always. Watch the free swing. Nice high ginger. The back somersault with a half twist to re the bar. Giant swing with a half turn. The front giant, very well done to a beautiful high Jaeger. The judges are really looking for extra amplitude on those release moves. Giant with a full pirouette. Into the dismount. Nice oh. high, tough double back. It's not one of the most difficult dismounts being done in the competition, but they do their dismounts level with the high bar. That's what we said. Watch out for the Chinese young team. 15-year-old John Chaya. This is a great angle. You can really see the velocity on this swing. Look at the height above the bar. And perfect positioning for the regress. You can also see how far those bars are separated. The long jump from the low bar up to the high bar. Here comes. The last giant with a full pirouette. There's a preparation giant right into a tuck double back dismount. You can see she finishes it at the level of the high bar. Very nicely done. <laughs> nice smile, and why not? A 9.912. They are really going to make a move on this event. If the following two gymnasts hit their routines. Well, the name you see there is correct. It is Lee Lee. Her last name is Lee. Her first name is Lee. 15 years old. And like all the rest of them, very short. Four, seven and a half. They're very young people, 68 pounds. And in an international event, she was first in this event this year. Beautiful straight front giant. Giant reverse heck going the other way on the high bar. Watch this move. First time I've ever seen it, a German giant into a reverse tech. Very original and very difficult. 
And another oh. high tuck double back dismount. What a tremendous dismount. The Chinese are going to be in the top three for sure after this particular event. It is their best event, the uneven parallel bars. Beautiful amplitude in that routine, and that one unique move in the middle of the routine, I'm sure, will probably bear the name Lili after this. Look at the nice body position. The reverse tech going the other direction, not as common. Sets up for this move, and this is unusual. A German giant, and right back over the bar to the reverse hex. The officials, Kathy, are in dismay also with that great performance. They've not yet posted her score. Lee Lee, 15 years old. The Chinese men's team was a bunch of juniors who did rather well here, but the Chinese women, also youngsters, and uh, stars of the future are doing very well, at least in this apparatus. The uneven parallel bars, here comes the score, 9.925 for Li Li of China. So with that in mind, here come the Chinese. They started out the second rotation in fourth place. We're sure they'll move up, and we'll come back. Now to Larry King. Thanks, Jim, and I'm with uh, Nadia Komenich and Olga Corbett, and before we take a break, their thoughts on the young Chinese. Nadia, the Chinese look 11 years old, 10 years, These are, this is a young team. Uh, yes, it's a young team. They change. This is other generation, the younger generation. Now, are they, is, is this young lady impressing you? Uh, the Chinese was all the time uh, very uh, good on the bars, and uh, she did a very good routine. This very is, difficult. This is not then, in other words, their performance on the bars is not surprising you. No, I knew that the Chinese are very good, but... Uh, Alga, you like this performance too? Yes, I really like it. This element is new. I also want to pay attention to the Chinese gymnastics on the world which in Moscow. I even know the Chinese team back in Moscow. They're good. I like Chinese gymnasts because they work very hard at protecting every element. The United States and Brazil are going to play later tonight in men's basketball. The winner will go to the gold medal game, and you'll see that game right here. And we'll be back right after this break with more ladies' gymnastics. Don't go away. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. They don't get any prettier than Seattle in the summertime. Take a look for yourself. We're returning with our coverage of the 1990 Goodwill Games. Basketball score in the first half. Yugoslavia 45, the so 46. The Soviet Union 35. Yugoslavia leads by 11 in the first half. The winner of that game will play the winner of the United States-Brazil game for the gold medal. You'll see the game between the United States and Brazil. We'll get you some highlights from the Soviet-Yugoslavia game as well. We're going to stay with ladies' gymnastics. And before we throw it back to Jim, uh, Alga was saying something during the break that was really interesting, that you wish you were there. You'd like to be there to help the Soviet team. Would you elaborate a little? You want to be a coach? Our Soviet girl, Ms. Baginska, fell down, and I feel so sorry for her. I really wish I was there to cheer her on and to tell her she can do it. Would you like to coach? Yes, I coach in Romania, the junior team. You do? Yes. Did? Yes. Would you like to coach in the United yes, States? I, I like very much to coach wherever I will be. Where are you living now? I live in Canada. Montreal? That's the and place when, where I won the, my gold medal. And your home is? Belarus, Minsk. In Minsk? Yes. Yeah. My mother was from Minsk. Oh. We'll be back with Nadia and Olga, but right now back to the Tacoma Dome and Jim Simpson. All right, Larry, let us call out all of the cliches. A gamer, someone who has to play when hurt. We told you about Kim Zemesko. As you take a look at the standings at the end of the first rotation, we're in the second. We told you about her tendonitis. We told you about her bursitis. She got a 9.90 on the beam and watched moments ago as she took the floor for the floor exercise. 
talk about a gamer. All out the cliches because she deserves them all, Kathy. This was about the best floor routine I've ever seen Kim do. Very, very powerful tumbling. You'll see it right here. Opens with a full twisting double back in piked position. Very European type music. Perfect double turn. These are all the tiny little things that the judges are looking at. You don't want to give away any deductions. Three whip backs, right through to a double back, and a perfect landing. So the team really picks up here. A lot of energy. Final tumbling run. Take a look at this landing. Again, <laughs> right on the button. And for that, she got a 9.937 bettering her mark, which we thought was incredible, on the balance beam. And you look ahead to tomorrow's all around. But in the team standings for the second half of the second rotation yet to go, the USA holding on to a slight lead over China. The Soviets yet to compete in this rotation. And what, Kim is, what is really important in this competition, the team competition, is that the United States is really doing very well. They had four excellent floor routines, all scoring 9-8s or 9-9s. That was really the only deduction in the whole routine. Slightly large step after that first tumbling run. It's a really nice tumbling run. If you didn't know the name before, there she is, Kim Zemesco of Houston, Texas. And let's join one of our anchors of the IBC that has come out here to Tacoma with us. And let's go to Hannah Storm in our own building, Hannah. Well, Kim Zemesco told us, Jim, that the floor exercise is her favorite, and I think you can see why. She was absolutely terrific, has been the USA's a most solid performer to date. Sandy Woolsey, also a solid performance on the floor. She rebounded from her fall off the dismount uh, when she was on the bars, uh, excuse me, when she was on the balance beam. And Benny Aquino is an interesting story. She's displayed great grace. She has beautiful body lines. She's been absolutely terrific in what is really her international debut. So solid performance all around from the U.S. gymnast. And assistant coach Stormy Eaton has just told me the American ladies have a vault coming up that could be their strongest apparatus overall. They are all doing the same vault. Jim? All right, Dana. And we will tell you that Oksana Chusovindita of the Soviet Union, the first on the beam for the Soviet Union, fell. So this story is not over yet. We'll come back in a moment. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. As we left you, we told you that Oksana Chufantita fell for the Soviet Union on the balance beam, and let's go back in time to see the Soviets with more problems. It was on a round-off layout step out. She's fairly new to the Soviet team, and I think she's showing a little immaturity lack of experience but more importantly this is a critical situation now the Soviet Union finds themselves in very much a pressure situation in order to catch the United States to tie with them at this point they would have to average a 9.916 Kathy when event. was the last time the Soviets trailed in a team competition have you are you aware of any time I only know of one time they ever lost a major championship and it was to Romania and it's very unusual for them to not have the lead throughout an entire competition. That, uh, as I recall, was in 1987. And Romania is in disarray, as we said, as they came on the air, because, uh, well, they're closing down a lot of training centers. But actually, they couldn't send a whole team. But yeah. there's Chuso Vitana, 15 years old, from Tashkent, and she fell and got that 9337. Very unfortunate, as I said, for the for Soviet Union. They had a fall on the uneven bars. Of course, they were able to drop that score. Now they're looking to drop this score and not only drop it, 
but score 9-9 from here on out. Which is not impossible for this team, by the way. Not impossible for them, but there's added pressure because they've seldom, well, this team has never been in that situation, these youngsters. This is a tough event to have added pressure to. Here's where the problem was. The roundup was off to the side. And you could just see a little bit of lack of aggressiveness for that landing. United States, this is after one rotation. Remember, China is moving up. Soviet Union, as Kathy said, has to average a 9-9-0 to catch up. Tatiana Tatiana Lysenko has just completed her work on the balance beam with a 9887. Close, but not quite there. They and need 995s and 10s. And this is Natalia Kalin uh, Kalinina, a person down in the Ukraine. She is 16 years old. This is not her best event. But like all Soviets, she's an all-around performer. Well, if it's not her best event, I'm sure there's a lot of gymnasts here that <laughs> <laughs> would like to be as good. Exactly. And the Soviet Nationals last year, she was first in the all-around. So she's an all-around great performer. Beautiful full twisting back handspring to a swing down. Very difficult move. It's becoming much more common. She has a nice combination of elegance in her dance and explosiveness in the tumbling and acrobatic elements. Beautiful combination, and that's a required series combining dance and acrobatics, which lately right into a back roll. This year she was second in the American Cup of the All Around, second to Kim Zemesco. Back hand to a layout step out. Now that's the type of planning I was talking about when Chusa Beatman just wasn't as aggressive as Selena was on that man with experience. Very nice work. And look at that shot. A full twisting double back dismount with a perfect landing. Not only is that a very difficult dismount off the balance beam, but to do it that well and then stick the landing is incredible. Natalia Klelinina, a person in the Ukraine. Natalia is going to keep the Soviets in contention. Don't count them out yet. You can never count them out. Again, that's a full twisting back handspring to a swing down. And I've said it before, and I mean it, I would hate to have to train that every day in the gym. Very nice pass. Watch the aggressiveness on this landing. Some gymnast might have been a little bit off here. She checked it quickly and went right to position. This is superb. Oh. Full twisting double back, pulled it right around. Judges thought so also, Kathy. 9-9-0 for Natalia Klelinina in the balance beam. And here is the world champion who fell on the uneven, Tatiana Boganskaya. Not only is she the all-around world champion, but a two-time European champion as well. Really the queen of gymnastics at this point. And such is the nature of the women's gymnastics at age 17. Svetlana says she may be too old by the time Barcelona and the Olympic Games roll around in two years. I would love to be that old again. <laughs> very nice work so far. She also is very aggressive on this event. Very sharp movement. Interesting choreography. One of the requirements is that the gymnast must do some element down low to the beam before she was fulfilling that requirement. Gainer, layout, step out. She has an interesting landing on all of her elements. Very different from the gymnast. If she comes up with a 9.962, the Soviets would move into a tie with USA. Well, she has the reputation and the routine to do just that, but she has got to make no mistake. Double back. Look at uh, that landing. That is experience. Under 
under pressure. That is a seasoned veteran. She knows how to come back. Very rarely makes a mistake. That's one of the trademarks of Golden Sky. Is that she is so consistent, and that's why she's well. Been. Well, to learn Larry King that uh, he said that his parents were from Minsk. Well, Svetlana is from Minsk also. Nice front tuck mount right into a double stag jump. His first critical pass on the balance beam. Tumbling pass, backhand layout step out right to another backhand spring. And as I said, she lands a little bit differently than most gymnasts with a straight leg and leaning slightly forward, but it works for her. You know exactly what's going through this world champion's mind. She must stick the dismount, and she does just that. Drops it right in. And you know what? She has put the USA behind the USSR with her 9.937. Check that with a 9.937. USA stays in the lead, but barely. Let us go on to Larry King again. Uh, thanks, Jim. Wow. <laughs> what an event. And by the way, just to, uh, so she gets some credit, uh, Vika Farahan is doing our interpreting tonight. She's an American formerly of the Soviet Union, and she's from Pinsk, where my father, my late father was from Pinsk, my mother was from Minsk, that takes care of all the Minsks and Pinsks. What did you think, uh, no, uh, Nadia, of Svetlana's performance? I knew Svetlana Bovica before. She's a great gymnast, and uh, she's still the best in the world, I she's think. She's right now the best. Yes. Also and uh, she is so sure in all the things that she's Jim Simpson doing. said at 17, she's 17 now, she might be old for Barcelona at 19. What do you think of that? Uh, in 1992, uh, gymnastics is a sport you start earlier and finish earlier. And I think if she feels she's so old. If you feel right. old, you're yes. old. <laughs> That's she's right, if you top. feel old, you're yes. old. All right, what did you think, Olga, of her performance? I think she deserves a 10. She really did a remarkable job. Marvelous. And I will feel really sorry if she won't make it to 1992 as a gymnast. Something's wrong, right? See, Larry, you and I should go to Minsk since you have such beautiful girls there. Olga, come here. Come here. We go to Minsk. Yeah. <laughs> the quiet night. I'm getting carried away here, Olga. Uh, I, want, I want to make a comment. The Soviet uniforms are beautiful. You mentioned they make you look slim. I always said that black and white looks great, and now finally they believe me. It's my favorite color, you can see. Yes, black and white. Yeah. <laughs> I like, can you, do uniforms mean anything? Do, does it matter what you're wearing? Yes, it does. It matters a lot. The gymnast feels herself better, she feels herself more beautiful. The better she is. It has to be comfortable, it has to be attractive. Do you agree? Yes. In other words, if they give you a drab looking like a yucky uniform, no. <laughs> you'll perform worse. No, I think that uh, it's very important, the uh, uniform, for the gymnast. In other words, the better you feel, the better you perform. Yes. I want to even this up, can I? This is a good job. When we come back, more ladies gymnastics. I'm Larry King with Hannah Storm and Nick Charles at the 1990 Goodwill Games. Don't go away. Don't forget afternoon action this weekend on TBS. Goodwill game coverage starts at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, tomorrow and Sunday with Nick and Hannah. We're back at the International Broadcast Center here in Seattle. Let's get back to the latest gymnastics. Hannah Storm is at the Tacoma Dome tonight. Hannah? Well, I don't think I sound like Hannah, Larry. <laughs> we'll get to her in a moment, but take a look at the scores after two of the four rotations. By .025, the Soviets trail the United States. China is in this, and it is the United States leading after two rotations over the heavily favored Soviet Union with two more rotations to go. And now let us rotate down to the floor in Hannah Storm. Thanks and typical of Bella Caroli's gymnast of the USA team tonight. They're consistent, they're well prepared, and they are unafraid. Bella Caroli, perhaps the world's best known gymnastics coach, has made his mark on two continents, Romania and the United States.
Bellic Crowley defected to this country in 1981 when his Romanian team was on tour here. We see Bella on the sidelines, the scowls, the smiles, those big bear hugs. But what we don't see is Bella's other side. She's perhaps the only Romanian cowboy in Texas. I found my day at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock when uh, I'm preparing the gym, preparing ready for workout, 7 o'clock workout uh, almost every day. Then my leaving uh, and I'm going out to the range. Then uh, I uh, have, you know, the, the other side of uh, my life. That's the one that keeps me probably going. Uh, the ranch is uh, totally different than uh, my profession. And uh, the opposite uh, activities, the totally different activities, I believe, you know, is a, a great, uh, giving a great balance. Balancing out, uh, out, out my, my, my interest, uh, balancing out the effort, uh, the mental uh, concentration, everything which is involved in both sides. Uh, ranching is not easy. Uh, working with animals uh, and creating and, and making a living out of it is, is really, I promise, is not easy. Strong. All right. Afternoon is, uh, again, uh, gym. Gymnastic coaching is not easy either. You, you need a lot of concentration, a lot of planning, an everyday control, minute-by-minute minute minute control. And I believe one without other, uh, actually for me, won't work as well like in the combination how I'm doing. I graduated to the United States of America. After eight years, finally, the long-expected uh, moment came. One of the, the senators from uh, Texas uh, handed out uh, the diploma. And all three of us uh, back hauled and uh, been declared U.S. citizens, which was a very, very rewarding moment. That was, that was something that was always going to stick with me. I consider myself a happy person and a lucky person at the time. I do two things or three things in my life and all I love. I love my profession, I love ranching, and I love hunting. And I love my family too. And um, now when everything is comes together, and I still have an opportunity to all four or five of them, I think you know that's the greatest, greatest thing what you can ever expect, or the greatest wish what any, any, any human person can have, uh, guaranteeing the happiness and um, fulfilling the so-called lucky status. We have just seen the very gentle side of Abella Caroli. There is another side in the gym. He is undoubtedly very strict. He is also very stern. He demands perfection. Not everybody agrees with his coaching method, but everybody agrees on one thing, and that is that Bella Caroli has taught us all how to work harder. And you see the results here tonight, Larry. Thank you, Hannah. We're going to go back out to uh, Houston. And this is the site uh, in Houston, Texas, that dynamic very hot city in the month of uh, July. Bella Caroli's gym, and uh, we're going to speak with uh, young Hillary. What's your last name, Hillary? Rivet. Hi, Hillary. You're a close friend of Kim Zemanskel's, right? Yeah. Okay, how's she doing so far? She's doing really well. Um, a couple of days ago, she discovered she had tendonitis in her wrist, and she wasn't sure if she was going to compete, but she's just blocking out the pain. She's doing really well. And I've got Nadia sitting here, I've got Olga, I've got Hillary. How old is Hillary? Thirteen. Thirteen. Are you going to be on our next team? You'll be fifteen, you'll be ready to compete internationally. Yeah. Is that what you want? Yes. Why, why Hillary, why'd you take this up? Um, when I was three, my mom started teaching a little tiny tots class in a gym, and I wanted to go. And then when I was seven, I came to Bella Crowley's camps in Houston. And I thought it was just great, and so I just kept going from there. Are you a Houstonian? Yeah, I was born and raised in Houston. What do you like most about it? Um, it's sunny most of the time. <laughs> no, I mean, what do you cold. like most about gymnastics? <laughs> oh. I can um, see where you took that as Houston, but I'm into Minsk and Pinsk. I got enough with Houston. Okay. <laughs> no, why are you into? Why do you like gymnastics so much? It's a challenge, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> what are you best at? Um, probably beam. And what's the hardest? My hardest is bars. Bars is the hardest for me. And how good a coach is Bella? He's really good. Is He's he easy best. or tough? He's tough. How often do you go to class? Um, every, 
every day, well, six days a week, twice a day. Wow. Hillary, good luck to you. We'll be following your career. Thanks. And we'll pass your best wishes along to Kim. And we'll be back with lots more gymnastics and men's basketball. The United States takes on Brazil. Winner goes to the gold medal. We'll be right back. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. We're at the International Broadcast Center. I'm Larry King. To my left is the great Olympian Nadia Komanich. To my right, the great Olympian Olga Corbett. It's opening night of ladies' gymnastics. Quick score, Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union. Yugoslavia in basketball, 71. The Soviet Union, 68. About five minutes to play. Three-point lead for the Yugoslavs. The winner plays the United States-Brazil winner for the gold medal Sunday. You'll see the United States-Brazil game coming up. Right back out to the Tacoma Dome and Jim Simpson. Jim? All right, Larry. The Soviet Union still trying to catch the Americans with the Americans yet to go in the second half of this, the third rotation. And let's go back in time for just a moment to Natalia Kalinina, 16 years old, out of the Ukraine, and this is her performance on the floor exercises. Kathy Johnson will be quick to tell you the Soviets are simply superb in this event. They are exquisite in this event. They not only have the dance, the tumbling, they have everything for this event. And they combine it beautifully. A double layout with a perfect landing. Look at the expression and the choreography. They truly strive for perfection. They do all the difficult elements and make them picture perfect. For her middle tumbling run, she performed a full pushing double back into a backhand spin, straddle jump, tumbles back the other direction to a layout step out. Many of the gymnasts here do the full pushing double back as their opening pass. They do everyone else's difficulty and more in the same routine. And if I sound like I'm a fan of the Soviet floor routines, I am. It's just beautiful. Another focus and double back. Drops it right in with a perfect landing again. What more can you say? It's just gorgeous. She had a 9887, besting her teammate Lysenko at a 9875, but Boganskaya followed with a 9925. So the Soviets have come on strong in this, their great event, the floor exercise. And again, to Kalina. Natalia, great performance. It's hard to believe that someone with such grace and poise can tumble like this as well. Nice high double layout. One of the more difficult passes being done. This is a very exciting pass. She goes through to a full twisting double back and tumbles right out of it. And ends again with a very difficult final tumbling run. It's full in and does it perfectly. The Soviets have completed their third rotation. The Americans will be on the vault next up. At the end of two, the United States was leading and they've got to do some work on the vault to stay that way. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. Here to see hundreds, some of the hundreds of little girls that work out with Bella Caroli at his gym in Houston. And Bella Caroli also has three of the four gymnasts representing the USA tonight. Among them, Kim Zmeskel, only 14 years old. She spent half her life at Bella Caroli's gym there. And the huge hopes of the United States gymnastics program rest in that tiny little 70-pound body. Now let's hear the journey from the girl that Bella Caroli says is a sleeping cat with a tiger soul.
My journey to the Good War Games began here in Houston at Chloe's gym. Only I started before Bella was even here. I started gymnastics when I was six, and Bella came about a year ago. I was in the original Hope group. It was uh, a group which Bella and Marta selected after you know looking at all the girls at about the age of seven or eight. I'm not the average kid. <laughs> Four foot five and seven months. Like when I first came to school, they were like, Are you sure she's um, in what grade you said she was in? She looks like she's in second grade. I'm used to it now. <laughs> I want to be tall enough to be able to wear, you know, like kind of clothes that I want to. I have a hard time shopping. <laughs> I think they're supposed to be stored. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so in gymnastics, being small helps a lot, you know, with the small body to carry around, it makes tricks a lot easier. Right now, I'm looking forward to competing as a good world game in the next year's um, World Championship than the Olympics in 92. After 92, I I'd like to be a normal teenager. One almost forgets that these national and world champions are just teenagers. Svetlana Boganskaya still plays with dolls. That makes their courage, consistency, and cool all the more amazing. Jim? All right, Hannah. The United States trying to upset the Soviet Union. They will now need, for their three vaults, 29.662 total, which would average 9.887 to tie the USSR. Amy Shearer will be first up. And it looks as though, Kathy, it may come down. They'll take the better of the two vaults. It may come down to how well the Americans do on the uneven parallel bars to decide this whole thing tonight. We're at the moment. The Americans are on the vault, and Amy Shearer Another Corolli's students is up. This is a good event for the Americans. They all have strong balls. Yuchenko with a oh. full twist and a stuck landing. That's what it's going to come down to. They've got to stick these landings because they cannot afford to give away a tenth or two tenths on landing. Now remember, if she likes the second one better, she can take that, one of the two. This is actually an advantage to stick your first ball because if you come back and even just do an an equal ball and still stick the landing, chances are the score tends to go up a little bit. Nice height, nice open position in the air, and of course a good landing. Awaiting her second ball. Amy is out of Cincinnati, of course, trains in Houston, as we said, and should get along with Bella just fine because she's very fond of animals and has a lot of her own pets. If you saw Bella's ranch down there feeding a deer, goats, getting his eggs from his hens, and this is what he loves. Gymnastics, and his team is in contention to upset the Soviet Union. 9-8-2-5 on the first for Amy. Amy is a very intense competitor. She's a great kid. If you start talking to her, she breaks into a big smile. Very, very friendly, but when she is on the floor, she is tough, and she concentrates to the fullest extent of her ability and it really shows in the performance. Good move on this ball. Better on the horse. It's actually a better ball. Of course, there was a hop on the landing, but she got better position on the horse on this second ball and was able to push a little bit harder. How do the judges reconcile themselves to that? Do they go for the better position on the ball or do they go for the landing? It's hard to say. It, it will probably balance itself out. We'll see if she gets any more height on the ball. It was almost equal to the other one. So I would guess that the other one will score a little bit better. The vault goes so quickly. The judges don't have what we have, instant replay and slow motion. We can look at it over and over again to see the deductions and see what is good about the vault. Well, she knows she already has a 987, rather 9825 in the bank. <laughs> As she waits the second. There, there's something Bella Corolli does all the time. If you watch gymnastics, he's a constant pacer. 
Trying to look at the scores, trying to keep his young women settled down. Here comes the score, 9-8. Seven. So it is better. They thought it was a little bit better. I thought the vault was better. It just all depends on what the judges did. They sit at a different angle. They're down below the level of the floor. Betty Okino, surprisingly good performer. Another Yurchenko with a full twist. Little step on the landing. Of course, that's what she will try and correct on her second vault. A very nice ball in the air. Good twist. Good position. You see she's right on top of the horse, right where she wants to be. She might want to try and get a little bit more rotation off the horse and into the twist. Kind of twist a little bit early here. She had that 9-9 nine, nine on the balance beam. You'll see several of the gymnasts do this ball. When Kim DeMessel comes up, you'll see she opens up out of the twist and flare makes the landing a little bit easier to stick. Uh, these are the standings, remember, after the second rotation. 9-8-0 oh for Betty on her first ball, and here's her second. Oh. Almost. Course, step forward. Again, almost the same ball this time. She's trying to stick. She was making the correction. She had over-rotated the first one a little bit and stepped back, so she tried for the stick and had to step forward. Now, as we see, the 9837 by Amy on her first, and Betty had a 980 oh on her first. Remember, the American women have to average 9887 to tie the USSR after three rotations. One thing you have to say about this American team, they're fairly inexperienced in international competition, and they're doing a heck of a job here, particularly Betty Okino, Amy Shearer, going up first and second on every event. It's a tough position to start your team off. It's very press, a lot of pressure. They have to try and set the pace and set that base for as high as possible so that the others can build on it. At the moment, Betty's waiting her second score, 9 on the first. The follow will be Sandy Woolsey, and Kim Zemesco will be the anchor. is the Desert Devils, her club out of Tempe, Arizona. Not a Corolli product. Now Betty, a Corolli product awaits the score, as do we. Come down to those uneven parallel bars. The Americans are doing extremely well. And in the final rotation, the Americans will be on the unevens, and the Soviets who will go last will be on the ball. When Bella was afraid that because of Kim's injury that she might give away a tenth or two because of a little bit of pain in her okay. wrist, he honestly thought Betty would step in there and really take up some of the slack and be one of the leaders of this team. So this is an inordinately job. long time here, Kathy, for a second ball. It's hard to say exactly what the judges are conferring about. The reason it well, it's sometimes she, quite lengthy. There is a problem with language down there. Well, she is back up like she's going to take yet another ball. I have no idea. So this will be her second ball. What happened on the first ball, we'll have to wait and try to get from the floor. But there was a long time. She was seated, as you saw, and now she's been told she's got to go again. The only thing I can think may have happened if she had gone before the green light went on or if one of the judges inadvertently put the green light on and she went ahead and vaulted and none of the judges were watching, but this is all just guessing from our point of view. That's her number 302. <laughs> Bella looking and Betty waiting. Those are some of our American judges. What kind of pressure does that put on? Does that mean anything at all to Betty, the fact that she's just standing there this length of time, or does this just go with the territory? It's some pressure for her, obviously, but she does have a, a score in the bank. <laughs> Which is 9-8-0. Bella's walking across to the judges. She went before the green light. That's right. She got a zero. Now. She had two yeah. balls. Okay, what has happened, and it's what I was afraid of, 
uh, and this is inexperience with a, a new competitor in international competition, you must wait till the green light goes on to perform your vault. If you don't, it's a zero. So I don't know what they're going to do with it. Well, Bella's walking back up to Betty now with the explanation. Maybe we'll be able to hear. No, no. That first was good enough. All right. Okay. That's it. The first vault was good enough. The 980 goes into the back. It's really sad to see this, and I'll tell you why. The United States lost a bronze medal in Seoul due to a technicality and a rule. And whether the rule, you can say it's a stupid rule or it's not, but it is a rule, and you have to know them, you have to be aware of them, you have okay. to inform the gymnast of the rule. Oh, now we go back to Sandy Woolsey of the Desert Devils in Tempe, Arizona, and her first ball. This is something that was always enforced to us. Do not go before the game. Woolsey and Zemeska will have to do very well if the United States is to stay even with the Soviet Union or fall to second. Sandy's very capable with this vault. However, her bat must have been hurting her throughout the competition. Watching her in the workouts yesterday and in the warm-up today, she just doesn't look as sharp as I've seen her look, say, at the trials or at the World Championships. And, of course, the recent American Cup. She's much cleaner, much sharper than. They still have Betty Okino's number competitor's number on the scoreboard for the vault. Now, what is going on now? I'm not quite sure, Kathy. But well, the red light is on, so Sandy knows better. She's not going to go, and she's not going to go until they change the well, number. They've, well, they've just put up the zero on the second vault for Betty Okino. That's what they're waiting for. Of course, a hush from the audience. And because there's been no explanation yet to the audience here. And there won't be until they go home and watch the taped telecast, and they'll find out. But it's just a rule that all the competitors down on the floor know. As you're on Sandy Wilson, you can hear her colleagues saying, come on, Sandy. She also performed a Yuchinko with a full twist. I've seen Sandy do that vault better, so I know she can improve on that. She was a little bit short on the horse, meaning too close to the board side of the horse. It's a little bit harder to get the proper push off, but you can get up on top of the horse. Stay forward and don't let yourself move. That counts now. We've got to have a score here. Let's go now. Stormy knows the story here. You cannot give away the deduction right here on the land. It's the last thing the judges see. Here's what I was talking about. She's a little short on the horse. It makes her almost gain her back toward the horse. And you heard what her coach Stormy said. We need a score here. The Americans desperately want to not only medal, but try to upset the Soviet Union, which is indeed a large order. Nine, six, seven, five for Sandy on her first. Needs to do much better. In order to try and beat the Soviet Union, you need nine nine. Sandy score that on this ball. Good in the air. A little bit better on the landing. A slight step right there, but definitely a better ball. While we're waiting for that score for Kim Zemesko, let's go quickly to Hannah. Here with Karen Wiseman, the uh, technical director here of gymnastics. Karen, can you clarify for us again the zero score of Betty Aquino on the vault? Yes, yeah, she went before the red light was off she must only begin vaulting when the green light goes on she went during the red light and the rules say that that is a zero and she did have a nine eight on her first vault so that will stand that will stand so all she misses is a chance to improve upon that yeah she misses a chance to improve upon her nine eight thanks karen again betty aquino a lack of international experience it was probably a little bit evident on that mistake back to jim thank you hannah and our Kathy Johnson had that in the bank also as we wait for Sandy Wilson's second mark. The American team hoping it's better than 9675. And here comes the score. It's 9762. And that'll leave it Kim, strictly up to Kim Zemeskel to kind of edge it up a little bit. Kim has been, well, with the bursitis and the tendonitis, she has been quite something to see. 
Kim is dynamite on this event. She's very capable of a big score here. She does a beautiful position at the end of the full twist. She flares open. Right here, opens the oh. octave. Oh, big step on the landing. She usually sticks that ball. Fortunately, this is a team competition. Competition 1B rules so the gym can perform the same vault again. Big good extension. Best of the interior. two vault count. And hold that. Calm, because that's got to be a vault, okay? Okay, calm, go back, slow. Come strong again. Solid it. Don't forget, press your toes down, too. Good position in the air. Beautiful flare out. Pike down too much. Got her feet way too far underneath her and had to take that step backwards. As you listen to Bella give her the final comment going into her second ball, this is when Bella is at his best. He can motivate these kids, get them pumped for competition. And I promise you it's why Mary Lou stuck her ball in 1984, because I've never seen Mary Lou stick yeah, a ball before. Ball. And when she needed to, she did. Nine, eight, seven, five, but Bella and Kim want better than that. Fortunately, with a pretty good score, 9875 on that first ball, she set herself up for a 99 plus if she sticks the ball. Can't wait for the all around tomorrow night. It's a team competition, and let's watch it. Yeah. And, oh, oh light hop. It looked like she had the stick. It actually probably will score a little bit better. A hop is always better than a major step. Big crowd here tonight, watching Kim Zemeskel and teammates try to challenge the USSR. It will be easier to see from this position. Yeah, lands a little bit too far forward, but it's good to see a gymnast make the proper correction. She had piked down too much on the first one. She tried to lay it out and go for the stick and just had to hop close. Nine, nine, one, two. Kim Zemesko does do better. Soviet Union, though, is now in the lead with, with one rotation to go. 88.848 to 88.735. Back to Larry King. Thank you, Jim. If you just joined us, our expert commentators tonight ain't bad. They are Nadia Komenich and Olga Korbut, two great Olympic champions viewing the goings on. By the way, a final in basketball, Yugoslavia beats the Soviet Union 84 to 78. Yugoslavia advances to the final gold medal round Sunday. The United States plays Brazil shortly. You'll see that game. The winner plays Yugoslavia. What do you think of the, you were remarking, uh, Nadia, as if you went up that the landing here is very important, but we're gonna see when the feet hit, right? Now you said that would be a 9-9, why? I said, uh, yeah, 9-9 nine, nine or 9-8, nine, 7 five. Because uh, she made a little mistake at the end. That you supposed to land one, perfect? Yes. How can you not move your foot when you land? You should do technical correct the vault. The your feet, will, you'll land yes, perfect? Yes, you will land perfect. You agree? On, you got to land perfect? Well, yes, sir. you must step in a very proper manner, but I thought it would be 99 as well. But the jump itself was very clean. I'm going to ask you in a moment how well they judge the judges judging, whether they guess well for themselves when we come back. We're going to see more of U.S. gymnast uh, Kim Zemeskel of Houston, Texas. There you see Kim. Before all this twisting and flipping started, Kim now is age 14. We'll be back with the 1990 Goodwill Games from Seattle. I'm Larry King with Hannah Storm and Nick Charles. Stay right there. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. Let's get right back out to the Tacoma Dome and Jim Simpson. Jim. All right, Larry, we are now into the final rotation, of course. At the end of three rotations, you can see that the Soviet Union, which trailed at the end of two rotations, now leads. And here's Amy Scherer, and the United States is now on the uneven parallel bars. And I said earlier, Amy has really done a terrific job being the leadoff batter 
for the Americans on each of them. The nice finger. Giant swing, front giant, to a back giant, and a pike double back dismount. She had one major release move in there. Many of the top gymnasts are now doing two and three. Didn't have anything spectacular necessarily in the event, but very, very strong, very clean. Good start off the team for the American. There's her release move. It's called a Ginger. Made famous by Eberhard Ginger, a West German male gymnast who invented the move. A front giant right into a back giant. There's her dismount. Pike. Oh, front giant. Back giant, here's her dismount, a pike. Double back dismount. Nice height, you can see it's level with the high bar. One of the things the judges are trying to look for. All the releases should be caught level with the high bar, and the dismount should be done at the level of the high bar as well. They're looking for that answer too. 9 8 oh. And while the Americans try to get the gold or the silver, the Chinese are on the floor in the floor exercises trying to challenge for the silver as well. Now Kim Zemesko, and she is so good in so many events, but Kathy, you point out this is not her best. This is definitely Kim's weakest event, but it's far from a bad event for Kim. I have seen her have a little bit of trouble with the release moves in some competitions. We'll take a look at him here. Here's her first one. Front giant sets it up to a Jaeger front. Perfect position to catch the bar. Not as high as the other release moves that we've seen. Second release move, reverse hex. Again, she has just... just How about that? Good landing. Beautiful dismount. But as I was saying, on those release moves, she just has ample height. Her side is in the heel. Tendonitis in the wrist. That you have to break your head to go to you know? I know. Good job. Here we say it is not her best event, and it is not, but look at what she's done. Here's that first release move. She does a Jaeger front. And a perfect regraph. Really, all that she would need to improve this is to try and get the amplitude on those release moves. She has enough difficulty. There's her second release move. It's called a reverse hex or a tikachev. And the judges are looking for the regress to occur with the shoulders level with the bar. So that the gymnast gets credit for that difficulty. But the dismount was extraordinary. Beautiful position in the air. And of course, what a landing. While we wait for, well, here comes the score now. Nine, nine, one, two. Nine, nine, one, two for Kim Zemesco. The team gold, silver, and bronze are still up for grab, but don't forget that all around tomorrow night. Come back, we'll see how this turns out in a moment. Back to Larry King. And just for your information, Nadia and Kim, Nadia and Olga both gave Kim a 10 on that last uh, performance. Okay, folks, big basketball game coming up. The Brazilians and the offensive machine. Oscar. His name is Oscar Schmidt, but everyone says Oscar against the young team of American collegians. We'll be joining it as soon as possible. The winner goes to the gold medal. The game is 30 minutes away. More gymnastics coming up. Stay right there. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. I'm Larry with Alga and Nadia. We're all old friends. Uh, by the way, ice hockey starts tomorrow. So too boxing tomorrow afternoon. We're at the International Broadcast Center. Our continuing coverage of the 1990 Goodwill Games. We're in beautiful Seattle. The women's gymnastic competition is down the road a piece in Tacoma. Let's check in there now with Jim Simpson. Jim. All right, Larry and Betty Okino has just turned in a 9-9-3-7 as a third American competitor. On the uneven parallel bars, and Sandy Woolsey followed up with a 9-9-0. Oh. Dallas 
go back in time to China, also in the race for the silver. This is Li Li, 15 years old, out of Guangdong Province, on tape, on the floor. And she had a fall on her first tumbling pass, a full switching double back. They're not as strong in the tumbling, just not as powerful. Whip back through to a double twist. They lack very much in the same difficulty. I spoke to the Chinese coaches. They sent three of their top juniors, so this is China's future right here. They're really hoping to groom them. 1992 in Barcelona. And what better place to do it than the Good Boy Games two years before the start of the Olympic Games. Finishes with a double bat. Good landing. As you can see, as I said, they just don't have the same power or difficulty in their tumbling. And that is her final floor exercise, and one of the reasons why the United States seems almost a cinch to take at least a silver. And moments ago, we told you Sandy Woolsey also had a good performance on the unevens. And here is that performance. Americans really did well on the uneven bars, and Sandy is one of the best on this event. Nice high reverse tech. for her dismount sequence. A half in, half out. It's a full twisting double back flyaway. One of the most difficult dismounts done on the uneven bars now. And done so well. Boy, that put a smile on her face. She's had a little bit of trouble on some of the other events. I think her back's been bothering her some. But what a way to finish for her. She was first in the national championship since she turned it a 9-9. Uh, it was a good fight. Great team. Great team. Nice effort. While we await the replay in the vault, the Soviet Union, their final rotation will need 9.8786 to tie and about a 9.9 average to beat the United States. That's ballpark figures. Here's that big release move. Nicely done by Sandy. Showing the requirements, moving from bar to bar. And his dismount, as I said, one of the most difficult done today. Used to only be done by the men off the high bar. A full twisting double back dismount, just that one step on the landing. Well, the Soviets are up in their final rotation. They've got to average 9.8786 to tie the USA, 9-9 to win it. We'll see when we come back. Here's Larry. Thanks, Jim. We're going to make a hop, skip, and a jump out to Houston. And there we are again with our uh, young ladies at Bella Caroli's gym. And their coach is James Holmes. How's the action gone, in your opinion, so far, Jim? Well, the Americans are doing very well. Um, all the girls are hitting their routines and showing good, strong, competitive spirit. And uh, Kim's performance with the injury? Oh, she's done great. Outstanding. You know, more than you can ask from Kim, you know, to come in without 100% preparation, having an injury and mentally coming in and leading the team, you know, with the most dynamic routines and, and getting the highest scores for the team. Thank you all very much. Continue to success, James. Oh, thank you. And um, the kids thank, appreciate your um, support in the Goodwill game. Our pleasure. Say goodbye, kids. Say goodbye, children. Bye. Bye, guys. Future Nadia's and Olga's. We're following women's gymnastics, and right now, coming up soon, tales of survival in men's basketball. The United States goes against Brazil. The winner gets to play Yugoslavia for the goal. That game is going to start in 22 minutes. The 1990 Goodwill Games is a presentation of TBS Sports. The United States has done its work for the evening. Their competition of the team championships is over. Now it's up to the Soviets to win the gold or fall back to the silver. And one of the American stars, Kim Zemeskel, is with our Hannah Storm.
thanks, Jim, here with Kim Zemeskel, the best all-around performer for the United States. First, Kim, we were all worried about your wrist. Were you worried about it? How does it feel right now? Well, the doctor told me that, you know, it can't get any worse. It's not dangerous to go and compete. It'll still have pain, but, you know, there's no risk. I'm really happy. Did it hurt while you were competing? Did you think about that at all? Well, it hurt a little bit, but once I got out there, it's like that was the last thing that I was thinking about. <laughs> I know that you beat Colleen in a, earlier this year. Did that give you any sort of confidence against the Soviets? Or do you even think about them when you're out there? Well, you can't really think about, you know, the other performers there because they're not going to have anything to do with your scores and you don't have anything to do with theirs. <laughs> what about being here in Seattle? This is a terrific crowd. Does it really pump you up when you're out there? Yeah, I really like the crowd. Um, I think it's easier to compete when there's a whole bunch of people behind you. What about your individual performance tonight? Where were you the happiest with? My bars, definitely. Um, that's been my weakest event, and I just went in. I wasn't even. I didn't have very much time to think about it since I came right from the vault, and that's when I was happiest with. <laughs> Terrific. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Kim. Thanks. Jim? All right, Hannah. And uh, Tatiana Lysenko has already had her first vault, and it is a very good vault. 9 and 9 one, two, better than the average that the Soviet needs to turn in to retain the gold that it won in 1986. And this is Lysenko, and this will be her second fault. But she's already got that 9912 in the bank. Soviets are also very strong in this event. So the Yurchenko laid out with a full twist, and boy, you can hardly do it any better than that. Mm. Beautiful position in the air, legs perfectly straight, perfectly together. Perhaps an even better score than the 9-9-1-2 she got on the first ball. The young Soviet women falling in the footsteps or maybe even showing the way to the Soviet men. They are so good. This is trademark Soviet style. Perfect form, perfect landing. This is an unusual arm swing on that hurdle. It doesn't hurt her at all. Down on the Ukraine, Tatyana Lysenko, 15 years old, and... 9.962. That's even better. So they're already ahead of the average. They must need to retain the goal. I wonder if the Soviets could have predicted that it would come down to vault, because I was very surprised that the girls they selected to go ahead and compete here at the Goodwill Games, but the ones that they chose not to use were having problems on vault. So they probably made a good choice. Nadia Kalina, though. Another Yurchenko full. Slight little stumble step there at the landing. Now, she also performs this vault with a double twist. I don't know if she's going to perform that here for her second vault. My guess is she will try and improve on the full twist and go for the stuck landing rather than the more difficult vault. China has already completed its rotation tonight they were going for the bronze remember and they still have an outside chance for nope I think they're going to wind up with the bronze the question really is the gold and the silver and see Jim that is really good for the Americans they have not beaten the Chinese lately they were fourth to them at the recent world championship in Stuttgart so that's a tremendous accomplishment here at the Goodwill Games. Lina, her second ball. Oh! oh. They just get better. Just when I think you can't improve on the ball, they improve on the ball. It's absolutely beautiful. And boy, that put a smile on her face. It's usually business as usual for the Soviets, but she even liked that. Look at the form in the air. Toes pointed and just drops it in for a great landing. One more 9-9 nine -nine by either Chuvasitna or Boganskaya. And the Soviets will have wrapped up the goal. One thing the Soviets are very good at. When they need the big scores, they can come up with them. 9-9-6-2 for Kalina. Well, this is what they needed to do, and we knew they could do it. Here's Oksana Chusovina. 
matches of Edena. Excuse me. For many of the other teams, nine nines are the exception. Soviet, it's usually the rule. Answering front pike with a half twist, a dynamite ball. Zavidina just follows in the footsteps of Kalinina and Lysenko on the vault. She is one of the more powerful Soviets on the team at this time. Good block off the horse, nice position. Fighting for those landings. They obviously know what it's going to take to win the gold here. This is a beautiful vault. Very difficult and very nicely done. Soviets won all the gold medals in the 1986 Goodwill Games. And Jusevitana has done her share. She is awaiting her score. And should she get better than a 9.712, she has tied the United States. Meaning the Soviet team has tied the United States. If she gets that 9.9, nope, 9.875. And you can almost put that gold right back where everybody thought it would belong at the end of the evening on the Soviet team shoulders. To show you how far both men's and women's gymnastics have come in the United States, the 86 Goodwill Games, only one gymnast won a medal. It was a bronze medal, Joyce Wilburn on the vault. And now look at all the medals already won by our men's team. <laughs> <laughs> they always do better with their encore. She's of Edena has an outstanding second vault, and that just about wraps up everything for the Soviet Union tonight. And that's something to say, that about wraps it up when you've got the world champion as the anchor, and she's not even needed, Volkanskaya. What can you say? I wish I had a nickel for every time I said perfect in this broadcast, but so many of these routines and these skills were done so near perfect. You can always find flaws when we look at it in slow motion, but this is as close as it gets, people. Nice push off the horse. Keep in mind, she's doing a very difficult vault. Awaiting her score, and next up is Milana Boganskaya, the world champion who won the goals in every single event of the European Championships this year. But she fell tonight in her first rotation, the uneven parallel bars, and so it is probable we will not see her tomorrow night. Almost sure thing, because she will not have qualified for the all-around 9987. So Vidana turns in a 9.987, the best ball of the evening. And here comes the anchor, just to show you what the Soviets can do. Here she is, the world champion, Svetlana Boganskaya. A beautiful gymnast, very poised, very experienced. Also the Olympic champion on this event. This is Yurchenko with a full twist. Up. Tiny step on the landing. I never even saw her do that in workout. She was working on a different ball, the same one Chusa Vitna just performed. She has nice position from the board to the horse. Good position in the air. Going for that stuck landing. Boy, it sure looks like that right ankle is very tender. She has it heavily wrapped. I saw it in the workout area. It sure looked like she was favoring that on the landing. It's a little bit painful. The gold belongs to the Soviet Union. The silver, the USA, as the men did. China finishes third. And here is the final vault and the final event of the evening for the winning Soviet team the world champion. 9912 for her first vault. And even though Svetlana won't qualify into the all-around finals, we will definitely see her again on Sunday in the event final. Forming the same vault. Going for that stick. Oh! Slide hop on the landing. It is all academic because the Soviets have won the gold, Kathy, and while we await the score, you're very happy that the USA has defeated China because it's the first time they've done that lately. Exactly. Tremendous boost for USA Gymnastics because the Chinese have a very strong program and to beat them this close to the Olympic Games two years away 
but the standard is still set by the USSR. They are the winners of the gold again. Anna Storm? When we come back, we'll have another visit with the Voyager. We'll have our remaining moments with uh, Nadia and Olga and, of course, men's basketball. The United States do or die. They beat Brazil. They play for the gold medal. They don't. They're history. Also, Steve Largent. Where's he going to be? Weightlifters and square dancing and ice hockey tomorrow and boxing. We'll be back with it all. Don't touch the clicker. Oh, you work this way. I like it. Tonight's presentation of the Goodwill Games is brought to you by Dianetics, the book by L. Ron Hubbard, America's number one self-help bestseller. By Right Guard Sports Stick from Gillette, anything less would be uncivilized. By Old Spice, the number one fragrance in America, number one fragrance in the world. And by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft taste. So get out of the old, get into the cold. Back at the Tacoma Dome, where for the second weekend in a row, the Soviet Union has won the team championship. For the second weekend in a row, the United States is second. Well, we saw Boganskaya, Kathy, at the end on the vault, not do as well as her competitor, her teammates, her colleagues. But it all started out when incredibly she fell in the uneven parallel bars and is out of the all-around championship. Very uncharacteristic of Boganskaya. The reason she is world champion and a European champion is because of her consistency. She had problems on the uneven bars, missed a release move called a reverse hex, and of course one of the most difficult things for the Soviets to do is to qualify for the all-around finals because they have to beat out some of their Soviet counterparts. On the other hand, we went into Kim Zameskal and she said afterwards to Hannah that she was thrilled with the event. On the other hand, we're saying this was not the best event for Kim Zameskal, but she got a tremendous score. Now it's always so exciting to, not on your best event, to hit like this and come up with a big score. And it's a relief to Kim. Like I said, she has missed this event before. Well, I can hardly wait till tomorrow night on the all-around, but for now, hats off to the Soviet Union and hats off to the American and Chinese. Let's go down to Hannah Storm. Thanks, Jim. Well, I talked to both of the coaches after the competition. Understandably, they were ecstatic. They say that in their recent memory, maybe even in the not-so-recent memory, this is the closest that the Americans have ever been to the Soviets in a major international competition. When you consider that last year a lot of these girls were juniors, when you consider that both Kim and Sandy were at about 90% coming into this competition, you've got to be really happy with the consistency that the Americans displayed. Again, going into the individual all-around tomorrow, it will be the best all-around performer here tonight at the Tacoma Dome, Kim Zemestel, along with Betty Aquino. That's the story from the Tacoma Dome. Larry? Thanks, Hannah. We're back again at the International Broadcast Center in our wind-up moments with the two most famous gymnasts of all time, Alga Corbett and Nadia Komenich. We'll get a comment or two from each. Nadia, were you impressed with the United States' performance tonight beating uh, China? Yes, I was very impressed. Uh, this is a good result for the United States, and I'm, I'm happy for the gymnast and for Bella also. Does the United States have a chance tomorrow night in the all-around? Yes, I think that they have great chance tomorrow, and also Kim Zemesko. I think that she will be the star tomorrow for all-around. You do. And Olga, were you happy with the Soviet performance? Yeah, they should be and can be the best. Of course, the team was stronger, but they were able to win the games. But I hope that the Soviet team could have done better, of course, but nevertheless they did a great job. I'm very happy with American performance. It's great for a very young team. Thank you both very much for a wonderful evening. We've had over two hours together. It's been great spending the time with you, with Olga Corbett and Nadia Komenich, and our translator for Olga, uh, Vika Farahan, now of Indianapolis, formerly of Minsk. Thank you all very much. Very, very much. In a second, we're now going to the eastern part of Washington, to Spokane. Steve Larn. Steve Largent. I'll get my teeth out of my tongue and see what I'm saying. Our Voyager reporter is out there. Now, he's always at a different place every night. And this looks like it says...